uh, the co-development approach is sort of like working with a customer, maybe in a sort of professional services engagement or something like that, where they maybe start paying you some money, they start testing your product, they give you some feedback, and you keep iterating with that customer. The danger there is, is that you end up building something that's sort of customized. Uh, to one customer yeah, or need. Yeah, yes. one customer, and there's not a lot of maybe translating that work to, to other customers. Mm -hmm. And so you do want to have a strong you know, vision for what, you know, what problems you're trying to solve sort of at scale for the market. Mm -hmm. um, but having a couple of customers who help both finance and help inform you know, how you should be solving these problems can be really helpful early on. For us, that was certainly the case with uh, Blue Origin and SpaceX who helped us solve some of these. Now, as you can tell, those are smaller companies. So they were uh, able to iterate with us quickly. Mm -hmm. And there were not many other examples like that in aerospace at that time. Um, so for a larger company, it's much harder to set up these engagements. Mm -hmm. But for example, in automotive, we started in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, but the key thing is building enough trust with the customer that you can really co-develop something as opposed to, uh, you know, say, hey, here's a final product mm -hmm. and do you want to buy my widget or not? And so um, I think the getting the sort of trust from the customer by uh, by willing to, you know, do some custom development to a certain extent to, you know, own and solve their specific problem mm -hmm. uh, is, is sort of paid back through the ability to then commercialize something that's a broader product applicable for, for many customers.